today because of the 38th annual Duck Festival. Um, it was a great weekend. We had a lot of activities that's still going on actually right now. We still have the skeet shooting going on. We still have entertainment. We had uh, the cooking contest earlier. We had uh, duck and goose calling is actually still going on right now too. Um, we had the grand parade yesterday and we had a, a new 2014 queen crowned. Macy LeBlanc was crowned, so uh, we had a really good weekend. We had a duck run this morning. It was a uh, 5K, and we had a great turnout. We had over 90 runners. It was a little hot this morning, but uh, from now on, we're probably going to move it up to an hour. And uh, yeah, it was a great success. It was a, uh, They had the colors. They had all kind of fun doing it, so we had a really good run this morning. Milford Seymour is playing right now. He was our grand marshal of our parade. We had Jamie Bergeron last night, we had TK Uland, we had Mike Dean, we had Todd O'Neill Band, which drew a great crowd. They had a great time last night with him. So we had a lot of entertainment. Yesterday we competed on stage in front of everyone and it was really nerve wracking, but thankfully I came out successful and of course what I do all year long is I travel around the state of Louisiana and I promote the Duck Festival at different festivals. We also like do activities at each festival and we have like day events and it's all it's really a lot of fun it's a lot of time to spend time with girls that represent other festivals around the state of Louisiana and we are at the gate on duck festival right now tell us how this is incorporated into the festival we're gonna have some dogs out here we're gonna simulate some type of hunting today in this class we have a hunting dog that can actually pick up multiple marks and do a little handling today we have a mark to the right and a mark to the left he must mark off the gun and from there retrieve the birds. After that, he has a bird that is down that he hasn't seen. He would then proceed to that stake and pick it up, and that is called the blind stake. And that's part of his test today. That's actually a doll that can, you can bring to the field, and he has some type of control. You can pick up your birds and bring them back to your house and prepare them. Right after this will be the started level. The started level will consist of two straight uh, uh, single marks back to back and these are young dogs that have uh, uh, not much training in the field uh, not ready not quite ready to go hunting as these dogs are in season then from this class here you go to the finished class and these dogs here are the class of our dogs uh, today they're going to pick up a triple and a blind uh, we have dogs that have competed all over the United States and Canada and we are very proud of them dogs and what they do for us. Our club puts this on and we put this on to come out to see where our dogs are. We compete and we compete on a national level. We do this to put on for the Duck Festival. We there pick up members. We show them, teach them how to train their dogs. Uh, of course this is known as the Duck Capital of Gaydon and um, we correspond with this and we help each other and it's it's good for both of us. The competition part is is uh, is fun. You make a lot you make a lot of new friends here. You um you, you meet a lot of new people. You have a good time uh, to train the dog. You know it, it takes a little bit of time every day, about 15 20 minutes every day, and uh, you know it takes a lot of work. And usually what we do is get get a group of guys together and do do training together and run different scenarios and stuff. And we do the competition part, run a few hunt tests and those types of things, and uh, you know just just overall have a good time. Dogs respond to to the different whistles that you that you giving them. You know uh, mainly for casting for giving them direct to where you want them to pick up the birds and whether or not you want them to stop and those types of things. For younger kids and people that come out to this festival, you think that they think that this is an interesting thing to watch? Well, yeah, they, they think it's awesome. That's pretty much how I got into the, the hunt test game is because my, my son wanted to do that. And, um, you know, it, it it's kind of addictive, you know, and uh, he got me involved and from that point on we just moved move forward with it. And, and yeah, it's, it's a real good uh, sport for young kids. Keeps them out of trouble too. My dog's name is uh, Bayou Petitonce's High Tide Storm. He just turned two years old so he's he's a pretty young dog. He's uh, work, We're working on his Hunter Retriever champion title which he's he's just about accomplished. We have trophies for first place in starter, first place finish, and first place in season. We also have plaques for first, second, third, and fourth place in each division and also ribbons for first, second, third, fourth in each division. What does it take for these dogs to be entered into this competition? I think it's $20 to register 
and they register with uh, the kennel club and that's pretty much it and then uh, for each division register whatever dog like um, then they got a new dog that's just starting off of course they're gonna start a starter a dog that has a little bit more experience it's gonna be in season and most experience finished we have some great dogs great uh, great dogs that have been doing this for many years and we also have seasoned dogs that are going to be finishing next year, getting more and more experience. Also, you also the winners also do get t-shirts and caps. I had a great career in duck calling and I was asked to come to judge so I gave my time and for the sport that I love and I came down this weekend to judge. I qualified 25 consecutive years to blow in the world's competition in Stuttgart, Arkansas. I started at 38 years old, so doing the math, that makes me pretty old, but I sure do enjoy it. Uh, I qualified, like I said, 25 consecutive years. I went nine consecutive years in the top ten, and ten times total, and I'm a two-time senior world champion. The youth part of it was great because that's, a, that's, our, that's our young people that are growing up and it's going to be you know blowing in these competitions for years to come but well you got some quite talented people here uh, and I really enjoy really enjoy listening to it and, and being a participant in it also but the judging part of it is really good also and you're listening for duck of course but you know the way these guys are blowing a duck call here you don't call like that in the field they're actually calling judges it's it's control of that duck call that you're listening for from the very top note to the very bottom note how you control the call and how you transition into the next series of calls this crowd is as good a crowd as I see other than the world championship and I judge quite a few contests I go to quite a few contests and the support of this area is just wonderful you've got a lot of young people here you've got a lot of seniors like me here and you've just got a, a good group of people here from around the community and, they, and they've all come out and it's just great to see this back in 2012 I sort of thought I was a good duck caller in the blind so I thought entering a contest would be fun and um, I entered in a contest in Lafayette and I had tied for first and got second and the experience is real addictive so I started entering in numerous contests and uh, the help with David Pruitt, Jason Campbell, a few other people uh, these past few years I've really excelled. Last year I came in here and uh, won all the juniors, all six contests in my division and I became the first person since Fred Parnell in 1953 to win a world championship in Stuttgart, Arkansas. What did you win today? I won the Louisiana State Duck Calling Championship in the senior division. Are you going to go on to any other uh, competition? Uh, now I'm qualified to go back to Stuttgart, Arkansas to try and uh, win in the men's division worlds. That is average of 70 competitors every year. It's a real stiff competition, so blowing clean is all I can do. We'll see what happens. In 2012, I thought it was pretty good, so I came over here and I realized I wasn't that good. And I, I didn't place at all, but I started practicing, practicing. Last year I came and I won the state in junior duck calling. And I pr placed second in state speckle belly. And I got third in gate on speckle belly. And what'd you win today? I won first in gate, Louisiana State, the uh, intermediate division duck calling. In 2012, I thought I was a pretty good duck caller, so I gave it a shot. What did you win today? Uh, first place in the junior first place in the junior duck calling division and second place in the intermediate duck calling division. Two and a half years ago we decided that we were wanted to we, we all love the duck festival. We all come here and enjoy the Fado Doe every night. And so we thought, you know, we have a recipe for a dish. Why not come out here and have some fun, enter and see what happens. Two years ago we started with duck fajitas, but every year we kind of expanded on that. So today what we brought to the table was our duck fajita recipe. But we also added corn mock shoe with pico de gallo, um, uh, grilled bell peppers, grilled onions, shredded cheese. But we also added a couple more bonuses to that. We added um, duck rice and gravy along with a, an appetizer of a duck wrapped in bacon with a red bell pepper in it on, grilled on the barbecue pit. So we really wanted to make it a total experience as a dish for the, anybody that ever ate it, um, especially the judges. And so we really took a lot of creative um, angles with it. We made a, a little duck blind for all of the condiments that went with the fajitas. And uh, it was just a real fun time. And, and we really wanted to make it an experience for those who ate it. And so, you know, we feel like 
uh, we did that today and like I said it was just a bonus to come out really well it's definitely not a reflection of a single person we all you know put forth a lot of effort together um, there were some things that one person did better than the other and and we really just all played each other's strengths and uh, it came out with a really good dish Today we cooked uh, two dishes. We did uh, filet blue goose breast, butterflied and stuffed with fresh pork sausage, made a little roast out of them and we, we pot roasted 20 of them like that. And we also did stuffed teal um, and we pot roasted them as well. And our side dish was um, green beans fresh out the garden with um, potatoes, um, baby onions and a little bit of um, bacon. We've got our backwood badass. It's a diamond wood barrel. It's AZZ. We, they retail at 39. Then we got our little badass. It's acrylic barrel. They're 49. Then we got our badass duck. They're a longer barrel, old school. Little raspy, $64. And we go all the way up to $119 on our different calls. Every one of our calls has got a different purpose. A good example, this is our burning timber. It's got a quarter inch hole in the back of it, which allows no echo when you're calling ducks, and it's very awesome, a different, distinct sound, it's, it's different. This call right here, it's called the last rites. So we wanted to have a duck, wanted to have them a robe and a Bible, reading the ducks their last rites. And it's a soft single read. There's a purpose for the call, but you still gotta design it and come up with an idea. And I love that part more than I do anything. What is it about ski shooting um, that's interesting to you guys? Just the competition, the, uh, it gets you ready for hunting season, it gives you practice in, in how to lead targets and how not to lead, you know, and what kind of lead you need. And when you go hunting, it helps you shoot ducks, you know, and stuff like this. So it, it gives you a better idea of how to handle a gun and safety. It, it's, just, it's just good all around for, for kids as, as well as adults. People get really good at it, they get into competition with it, and uh, uh, it becomes a, an obsession with you, kind of like any, any other sport, like football or anything else. You know, you just become, you start, the better you get, the more competitive you get. The guns, a variety of guns, you can use a 28 gauge, 20 gauge, 16 gauge, you know, just depending on what kind of gauge gun you want to use. Uh, the sporting clays, uh, they, it, they try to set it up with different venues, uh, like teal shooting or, or uh, mallard or rabbits. Uh, just got a different variety of targets that you can shoot from. Whereas skeet is just a, you know, it's the same target over and over and over repetitively, and then you just try to get as good as you can to kill as many as targets you possibly can. But on sporting clays, you set up so many different venues, you know, that that you're always shooting something different on every station. Tell us why you came to the festival today. Uh, well, we just came. We duck hunting a lot, so just wanted to see what it was about. What have you seen so far? Iguanas <laughs> and singing, pretty much. What is unique about the Gate on Duck Festival? Why should people come here? I think it's like a melting pot of all good things that happen in Louisiana. We have dog trials, skeet shooting. There's just so much that happens during the weekend, and it's a festival that really embodies what Louisiana stands for. Music, duck, food. Awesome. It's all about the birds, you know. You come here, you, you can't hardly ever eat wild bird, you know. You can't sell it. So it's, it's a unique place to come and eat that, get to taste it. The Cajun culture and the goose calling and duck calling and what we do around here, you know. And it, it's a big infrastructure for get on the, the duck and goose hunting. And this, this is just a time for us to get together and enjoy it and celebrate it. The sporting clay, the dog training, the, uh, the, the festival in itself is a good festival. I think it promotes the, the community and what, what it stands for, you know, and, and, and of course hunting, hunting and ducks is, is a big major factor in, 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 this, uh, in the festival itself. It's just a great experience to, I mean, have everybody counting on you and it's, it's great. It's local. You're always going to have a good time um, at the Fado Doe. They always have great acts coming in. You know, I remember last night it was uh, Jamie Bajeron, Todd O'Neill. It was a great time. It was a great environment. You can always have a few drinks while you're here. Um, it's just good people. And in, it, anywhere in Louisiana, you're going to have a great time when it's a get together with music. And I think that the Duck Festival in Gate on Louisiana is one of the best. Along with the fact that they have great things that the Duck Festival provides, like the dog trials and the calling competition, along with the cook-off every year. And I think it's really unique that Gaynor has this, and you know, there's only one duck capital of the world, and that's Gaynor, Louisiana. 
It is the last full weekend in August every year, and next year everyone should come. <laughs> you go to our website, uh, gateonduckfestival.org, and go to our Facebook, the Gate on uh, Duck Festival Facebook. You can get just about any information. You can get phone numbers on who to contact, and uh, just give us a call and we'll help you.